When I first came across the video of the Hal Tejas going down hard at the Dubai Air Show, I felt a knot in my stomach. This wasn't just another training accident. It was a public demo in front of crowds, and the pilot was an experienced Indian Air Force officer, Wing Commander Naman Sayal. What exactly went wrong in seconds? How could a highly capable jet like the Tejas lose control and crash? In this video, I'll walk you through everything we know so far. Let me start by establishing the baseline of what is known and confirmed. On 21st November 2025, on the final day of the Dubai Air Show at Al Maktoum International Airport, DWC, a single-seat Hal Tejas of the Indian Air Force crashed during a demonstration flight. The aircraft's tail number was LA-5026. According to the IAF, the pilot, Wing Commander Namansh Sayal, was killed. Emergency crews responded quickly. Witnesses described a large fireball upon impact and thick black smoke rising near the runway. The IAF has stated that a court of inquiry has been constituted to investigate, and the Emirates authorities are also participating. HAL, the manufacturer of the Tejas, characterized the crash as an isolated occurrence arising out of exceptional circumstances. Their public statements stress that they are fully cooperating with the investigation. It's also worth noting that rumors were swirling just a day before the crash about an oil leak on a Tejas at the show, but India's Press Information Bureau, PIB, debunked those claims. According to the PIB, what people saw was actually condensed water being drained from the aircraft's environmental systems, a standard procedure in humid environments like Dubai's. So, while many questions remain, the core facts line up. This was a demonstration flight, at low altitude, with a veteran pilot, and the crash happened in a matter of seconds. Before diving into the technical side, I want to acknowledge the human cost here. Wing Commander Namunch Sial was not just any pilot. He was deeply respected, and his loss is felt across his family, his squadron, and the aviation community. Sial was 34 years old, from Kangra District in Himachal Pradesh, India. He had a sterling record. He was an instructor in the Indian Air Force, training other pilots after having flown aircraft like the MiG-21 and the Su-30 earlier in his career. He was also known for his leadership and integrity. Classmates and colleagues have described him as humble, but highly capable. His family is grieving deeply. He leaves behind a daughter and his wife, who is also an IAF officer. When news of the crash broke, tributes poured in, in India, in the UAE, and across the defense community. The IAF publicly stated that it stands firmly with the bereaved family as the inquiry proceeds. It's easy, when analyzing a crash, to forget that we're talking about a person, someone with a family, with ambition, and with years of training invested in his craft. That loss alone makes this incident profoundly serious. Before we get into the maneuvers that preceded the crash, it's worth taking a moment to talk about the HAL Tejas itself. The aircraft has generated a lot of debate online. Some of it informed, much of it not. So let's ground ourselves in reality. The Tejas is a single-engine, delta-wing, fly-by-wire light fighter. Think of it as India's answer to jets like the Gripen or the older Mirage 2000. Delta-wing fighters come with pros and cons. They can be extremely agile at higher speeds, and they have impressive, instantaneous turn performance. But at the same time, delta surfaces create large amounts of induced drag, especially at high angles of attack. What that means in plain English is, if you start pulling the nose around aggressively at low speed, a delta-wing aircraft can bleed energy fast. Another important point, the Tejas at Dubai was not flying clean. It carried dummy external stores, pylons, and inert weapons for air show display. These were not live weapons, but they were full-size models. From a performance standpoint, they matter. You're adding drag and weight, and in this case, you're also adding rotational inertia that directly affects roll rate. If you've ever held a broomstick by one end and tried to twist it, you know how that extra mass slows down your movement. That's what happens when you bolt big objects to the wings of a fighter jet. Rolls become slower and require more control input. And this is critical because based on available footage, the fatal sequence starts with a roll. One more layer to add here is the demonstration environment. Airshow flying uses a very different skill set from combat flying. In combat, safety margins are variable. Altitude can be traded for angles, speed, 
or tactics. In an air show, your safety margin is a hard floor. You cannot dip below it, even momentarily. That means every maneuver has to be perfectly energy managed, perfectly timed, and perfectly recovered. The Tejas has a robust flight control system and a capable engine, but no aircraft is immune to low altitude energy loss. That's not a flaw in design. It's simply physics. Now let's walk through the most plausible technical explanations for the crash, based on the footage, independent expert commentary, and the aerodynamic principles involved. Again, the official investigation has not released a final report, so everything in this section is framed as analysis, not conclusion. When we slow down the video, we see the jet perform a knife-edge pass, followed by what appears to be a barrel roll or a loaded roll, and that distinction matters. In aerobatics, a clean, crisp aileron roll is done with the nose almost neutral. You unload the aircraft just slightly so it rotates without losing much altitude. But what we see in the Tejas is different. The nose dips, the angle of attack increases, and the wingtip vortices appear strong. Those vortices are a visual indicator of high aerodynamic loading and energy loss. Here's one possible scenario investigators will look at. The aircraft entered a loaded roll at low altitude while already carrying external stores, which slowed the roll rate. Because the aircraft wasn't unloaded properly, it lost energy quickly. As the nose dropped, the pilot added power, possibly full afterburner. But afterburner can't instantly restore airspeed or lift at low altitude. Thrust helps you accelerate. It does not cancel the downward vector when the aircraft is nose low and heavy. A second theory that analysts have discussed is a misjudged energy condition. Airshow pilots rely not only on flight instruments, but also on visual cues and instinct. Instinct honed over years. A maneuver that works at 1,000 feet can be fatal at 300 feet if you enter it slightly slower, slightly heavier, or slightly off axis. From the video, the Tejas briefly rolls wings level near the end, and that's deceptive. To the camera, it looks like a recovery, but what matters is the sink rate, and the sink rate appears to remain high, far higher than the altitude available. A third hypothesis centers on roll reversal limitations with external stores. When a jet carries large objects on its wings, reversing roll direction becomes slower. If you watch frame by frame, the Tejas rolls left, then seems to correct slightly. If the aircraft was nearing a boundary condition, meaning the pilot sensed the nose dropping and tried to counteract it, the combination of low airspeed, high angle of attack, and external stores could have made that correction sluggish. A fourth area investigators will examine is pilot workload. This was a complex demo flown at low altitude for an international audience. Wing Commander Sayal was an experienced aviator, but even experienced pilots deal with cognitive load and stress during displays. In airshow accidents historically, across many types of aircraft, one common thread is pilots attempting a maneuver that worked earlier in practice, but entering it at slightly different conditions in front of the crowd. And finally, there's the question of whether any mechanical issues contributed. So far, there is no confirmed evidence pointing toward engine failure, hydraulic problems, or control system breakdowns. Some online viewers noted a flash emerging from the exhaust moments before impact, but the timing is critical. It happens milliseconds before the crash, too late to have caused the loss of control. It's possible that this flash was an uncommanded afterburner flameout or compressor disturbance due to airflow disruptions, but again, this would be a symptom of the high angle, high sink rate condition, not a cause. All of these theories share a common theme, energy management. At higher altitudes, a Delta Wing fighter with external stores can complete these maneuvers safely because it has a margin to trade altitude for recovery. At an air show, that margin is razor thin, and physics doesn't negotiate. Now, as we wrap up, I want to take a step back from the technical details and focus on what we can take away from this tragic event. First, every airshow crash, regardless of country, aircraft type, or pilot experience, reminds us that display flying is inherently unforgiving. Demonstration pilots are highly trained, but they're also pushing their aircraft close to their aerodynamic limits, sometimes within a few hundred feet of the ground. When something goes wrong at that altitude, you have seconds, sometimes less, to recover. Second, this accident underscores the importance of energy awareness. Even the most advanced fighters can bleed energy quickly if maneuvered aggressively at low speed 
or high angles of attack. Engineers can build in protections, and flight control computers can buffer the pilot, but they cannot break the laws of aerodynamics. A loaded roll at the wrong entry speed can set off a chain reaction that becomes impossible to reverse. Third, we must acknowledge the bravery of pilots like Wing Commander Namish Sayal. Display flying is a high visibility form of national pride. Pilots take on those risks because they believe in their aircraft, their air force, and the value of showcasing their country's capabilities. The aviation community, globally, honors that. Fourth, this incident will certainly push both HAL and the Indian Air Force to reevaluate demonstration profiles, especially when external stores are carried. It's likely investigators will ask whether the demo sequence should be flown clean, whether role-based maneuvers should be limited at certain altitudes, and whether additional constraints should be placed on thrust-to-weight margins during public displays. And lastly, we should remember the human side. A family lost a husband and father, a squadron lost a colleague, a nation lost a skilled aviator. In aviation safety, we study accidents not to assign blame, but to make sure lessons are learned, so that fewer families receive that terrible phone call and fewer names are added to memorials. If any good can come from this, it will be in safer air shows, better training, and clearer understanding of the fine line that separates a flawless aerial highlight from a tragic accident. Thank you for spending this time with me. See you in the next video.